Good day, students. Uh, welcome to number 14 of our um, study of proof by mathematical induction. Remember that a wide variety of uh, math tutorials can be found on mathgodserve.com. If you like to access our collection of um, induction lessons, just go under the pre-calc tab to gain access to those. Before we get started with um, the proof, let's go ahead and review the plan um, of attack. The plan um, includes basically outlines the steps that we have to go through to execute the proof by mathematical induction. All right, so it can be broken down into three parts. The first part is a base case. So for the base case, um, in this proof, we're going to be showing that um, the, the statement is true for all n in the set of integers. So for the base case, if you're looking at um, natural numbers, for example, we just have to show um, show that n equals 1 is true. We're using uh, 1 as the starting value of n because for integers, positive integers, 1 is the smallest positive integer, okay? Part 2, or step 2 in our proof by induction is known as the inductive hypothesis. In the inductive hypothesis, what you're going to do is you're going to make an assumption, all right? You're just going to assume, um, assume that n equals k is true for some k in the set of uh, positive integers, all right? And then the last part um, is dependent on the inductive hypothesis is the inductive step, taking one step after the inductive hypothesis. So the inductive step basically involves showing that, you have to show that um, n equals k is true uh, follows that follows um, that the next step n equals k plus 1 is also true. Alright, so that's um, the basic rundown of the key components of a proof by mathematical induction. So let's take a look at our question number 14. So for number 14, um, we want to um, show by induction, show by induction um, that the nth derivative, the nth derivative of x to the negative 1 is negative 1 to the n times n factorial divided by x to the n plus 1. Okay? All right, let's go ahead and start with part 1. Part 1 is our base case. So for our base case, remember what we talked about in our plan, again, what the base case involves. So for our base case, we have to show um, that n equals 1 is true, okay? All right. Um, so any, for n equals 1, we are looking at the first derivative. So in this case, this, the uh, statement that we're going to be looking at, let me write what the statement is. So if we want to write down the statement in symbolic form, for the n derivative, the statement is basically the nth derivative, the x to the n of um, x to the negative 1 is equal to negative 1 to the n times n factorial over x to the n plus 1. So this is basically what we are trying to show, okay? So for um, n equals 1, the base case, we're taking the first derivative on the left side, and then on the right side, we're simply going to input 1 in the place of n, all right? So we're going to do the first derivative, d1, dx1, of x to the negative 1. The question is, is the first derivative equal to what you get when you plug in 1 for n in the expression on the right? Okay, negative 1 to 1, 1 times factorial over 1, I'm sorry, over x to the 1 plus 1. Is this true or false? 
Now to do this, you have to remember what um, your power rule for differentiation is. So remember that um, ddx of x to the n is equal to n x to the n minus 1. All right, that's a basic formula from calculus. All right, so with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and um, find the derivative of the left side of that term of our equation, and then we're going to simplify the right side as much as we can. All right, so the first derivative here, applying this power rule, um, the derivative of x to the negative 1 is negative 1, x to the negative 1 minus 1, okay? Is that equal to negative 1 to the first power, just negative 1? 1 factorial is 1 over x squared. Is the left side equal to the right side? If we simplify this, we have negative 1 over x squared. If we simplify this, we also have negative 1 over x squared. Are they both equal? Absolutely. So our base case checks out. Okay, next part is our inductive hypothesis, part 2. All right, so let's write this down, our inductive hypothesis, inductive hypothesis. So for inductive hypothesis, we're going to be making an assumption. We're going to assume, assume that um, n equals k is true. All right? For some k in the set of um, positive integers. Um, so what does that look like? We're going to assume Assume that the kth derivative, okay? How do you write the kth derivative? Is d to the k, um, dx to the k of x to the negative 1, that the kth derivative is equal to negative 1. Now, instead of n, you replace your n with k, okay? And instead of n factorial, will be k factorial over k. Um, over x to the k plus 1, okay, over x to the k plus 1. So we're going to assume that um, this statement is true for some integer k, all right? So this is our inductive hypothesis. Now, the next part is our inductive step, okay? So what are we going to show in our inductive step? This is the hard part. Um, so for the inductive step, as outlined in our plan, we just want to show, show that um, n equals k is true, follows that the next step, n equals k plus 1, is also true. All right, so that's um, the goal. Okay, so um, what does k, uh, n equals k plus 1 involve? Well, it means that we're taking the k plus 1 derivative. Okay, so what does that look like? It's just like this, but we're, we will replace k with k plus 1. So d k plus 1, dx to the k plus 1, of x to the negative 1. All right, so we're taking the next derivative after k. So if we're looking for this derivative, um, if it is equal to an expression where all these k's are replaced with k plus 1, then uh, we'll be done, OK? So um, in order to do that, let's go ahead and um, express this as a derivative expression involving that. This is the kth derivative. The k plus 1 derivative involves taking the first derivative of the kth derivative. Okay? So we're going to just write this as d dx of d, the kth derivative, dx to the k of x to the negative 1. Okay? So that's basically what it is. All right? Um, now, let's see, from our assumption, 
we know we can make a substitution here. We know what the kth derivative of x to the negative one is. Based on our assumption, we know that it is equal to this uh, value right here. So let's make that substitution here. So this is going to be um, the derivative of um, negative one to the k times k factorial over x to the k plus one. All right, so this is what we're going to be differentiating. All right, so let's go ahead and find the derivative of this expression. Um, using the, the constant multiple rule, we can um, do some, carry out some factorization here. So we know that k is an integer, it's a constant, so we can factor um, the terms of the k's out. So negative one to the k is, an, is, a, is a constant. k factorial also is a constant. So what we're basically looking for is the derivative ddx of one over x to the k plus one. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. So let's rewrite this um, as a polynomial expression so that we can apply the power rule, or express it as a power. So we can apply the power rule in determining the first derivative of this expression here. So we just drop the coefficient down, negative one to the k times k factorial, and then the derivative of x to the negative k uh, minus 1. Okay, so when you reciprocate um, a term, you invert the sign of the power. Okay, so I distributed the negative to both terms here, so that's why you have negative k minus 1. All right, so we're now ready to apply the power rule in differentiating this um, expression right here. So let's go ahead and apply the power rule. Drop down the uh, coefficient, negative 1, to the k times k factorial. And then you power down the exponent. Um, let's see, times, <clears throat> times negative k minus 1. And then x to the negative k minus 1 minus 1. All right, basically using the uh, power rule. All right, let's simplify this further. Here we will, we're going to have negative 1 to the k times k factorial. And you can factor out negative 1 from here, so negative 1 to the first power. If you factor out negative 1, this becomes k plus 1. Okay, and then um, this is x to the uh, negative, negative k minus 2, but I can factor out the minus, so it becomes negative k plus 2. Okay? All right. Now let's see what we can do. We can use the properties of exponents to combine these two terms right here. Negative 1 to the k times negative 1 to the 1. If you're multiplying bases, um, exponents with the same base, what do you do? You simply add the power. So this is negative 1 to the k plus 1. Now we're using the definition of factorial. k factorial times k plus 1 is simply k plus 1 factorial. All right. And then this negative, we can use the reciprocal property of exponents to send this downstairs. It becomes over x to the, instead of k plus 2, I can write it as k plus 1 plus 1. Okay. And that's exactly what we want. If you notice that, if you look at your assumption, all the, um, all the k's have been ad advanced to k plus 1. All right, they've all been advanced to k plus 1 but as a result of advancing the left side to k plus 1, basically taking the k plus 1 derivative. All right, so we have the situation where um, the k plus first derivative e to the k plus 1, the x of k plus 1 of x to the negative 1 is equal to that. So that's exactly what we want, all right? So let's go ahead and write down our conclusion. So um, since the statement, since the statement is true for n equals 1, the base case, and um, 
n equals k is true implies that implied that n equals k plus 1 is also true. That means that the statement is true for all um, positive integers, integers um, n by mathematical induction. All right, so that's um, that's what the basic idea of mathematical induction involves. Base case, uh, inductive hypothesis, and then the inductive step, okay? Draw a box of accomplishment to show that you're done with your proof. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Really appreciate it. Do feel free to sub subscribe to our channel for updates to other great clips such as this. And do post a comment to let us know what you think about this, this presentation. More clips can be found on math.serve.com. If you like um, more tutorials on mathematical induction, you just go under the pre-calc um, tab to gain access to all of them. Thanks again for watching. Have a wonderful day.